Lauren and Karen, I just want to thank you for sharing your stories with us. And, you know, I guess I'd like to start with where we are right now today. What is this like for the two of you to be together sharing your story in what to us is a very private way, but we know that will become public? It's a very surreal moment for me because I never thought I would be doing this. I, I never meant to go public with my story, but I, I feel like if it can help somebody else, then it's worth my lack of privacy, I guess. Mm. How about for you, Lauren? I feel like I'm in a dream. <laughs> I feel like it's been 20 years in the making and that God has orchestrated all of the details so that we could come to this point. And I'm proud of my mom. Uh, I know how hard it's been. The journey's been a long one, but I think that her story and our story is going to impact so many lives and it's going to be amazing. I think you look peaceful, Karen. I, I kind of am. I, I'm not even sweating. <laughs> <laughs> And all the women in the world said, amen. <laughs> Going into this, what were you expecting to have happen? Sharing your story with Lauren being here, with Jana being here. In your mind, what was the tape in your head playing of how this was going to go? Maybe worst case scenario, best case scenario. I honestly didn't know if I could do it. Uh, I've never told my story before. Lauren is the only person I've ever told this to except for a really close friend and people in my family so that worst case scenario this wouldn't have happened get up run away cry <laughs> all the oh, things well, i've no, thought no, i did all that I'm, I'm sorry i did do that <laughs> <laughs> but isn't there something amazing about sharing your story even just that first time and it's almost like the load is lifted. Yeah. I often tell survivors, we're so scared mm -hmm. to speak it out loud. Mm -hmm. But if we take that first step and we tell even just one person, it almost seems like you mm -hmm. can breathe a little bit better. You feel lighter, yeah. What was it like for you watching your mom share her story? Mm. Emotional. Um, but I'm so proud of her. Surreal. I mean, I think it's, I almost feel like I'm watching a scene from a movie and it's not my life, you know? <laughs> it's a really weird feeling, but I also feel like it's like everything that's happened in my life to this point now all makes sense. And I feel so much more purposeful and that that's going to continue from this point forward. And that's what I was going to ask. So what's next? I mean, Karen takes the world by storm. Uh, Karen just retired after 17 years of teaching high school, and Karen doesn't know what she's doing next. And Karen probably likes that a little. A little, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how about for you, Lauren? What's next? What's next for you personally? What's next for you and your relationship with mom, I mean, does today change anything? I don't think it changes anything. I think I'm more more proud of her than ever before and more solidified in our relationship, you know, than ever before. And I think this has brought us closer together for sure. Mm. And you know, as far as my family goes, my, my oldest one's in middle school this year and my youngest one's going to kindergarten. And so I'm going to have a little more free time coming up this school year. And uh, I think I'll be sharing my story more. Mm -hmm. And I feel, you know, with my mom doing this, like I really fully can. Mm -hmm. And and that that's the next step for me. And that's what I was suspecting is the one thing that has changed is maybe you feel like you don't have to worry quite as much about mom. Did you know how much she worried about you? Yes, we've had several conversations about it and 
I could tell she was holding back, especially on speaking, because she knew that I was an emotional wreck and just needed to work through my feelings and all the baggage mm-hmm. that I carry around. And I can tell you guys, I went through this with my birth mom back in 2019, 2018, 2019. And I can remember how surreal it was to sit down with her and hear all of her experience and mine and walk away from there going, things are never going to be the same, but in every good way. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the world that would say, you're right, Karen, to have an abortion supersedes any of Lauren's perceived right Mm -hmm. to be born, right? Because we hear that a lot Mm -hmm. with abortion survivors is, you know, you saying that you had a right to be born is impeding on a woman's right for reproductive choice. Well, I think the whole argument of my body, my choice, she was not part of my body. You know, she was in my body, but um, she is her own person. And I had to work through that and realize that. And I know a lot of, a lot of women don't realize that. Mm. Lauren, would you say anything about that other than what your mom has said? I think she covered it. I mean, I think it's clear that, you know, I have my own DNA. I have my own fingerprints. A separate egg and sperm came and, you know, made me. So um, it's hard coming from the perspective of an abortion survivor and now knowing my story. Obviously, I didn't grow up knowing that. But um, to hear the world say that, where she was in her situation invalidates the fact that I should have life. Like that's tough. That's a hard pill to swallow. Um, And I just want people to know that they have other choices. Mm -hmm. That is not the only option. And there are resources and there are people who want to come alongside of you and allow that child to have a life. And it's a life that's worth living. And I'm proof of that. I, I think the the big thing for women in that situation, having been there myself, you don't feel like you have other choices, especially I think young women, teenagers, the choice may be made for them. You know, their parents may force them to get an abortion, but I had to walk away from my home situation to do what was best for me. And, you know, other women may have to make that kind of choice, too. What do you think this means for your family as a whole? The two of you now both sharing your story. Did things look differently for your family? Does it change the secrets or the shame that have existed? (laughs) Well, I think I'm the only one that had the secrets and the shame And I think just by telling my story, you know, it, 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 it is my life. I, you know, I can't change it. Um, I just have to work through it. Mm -hmm. I often remind people we don't get to choose the joy or the suffering. Right, we don't, and life is commingled with the two things together. Mm -hmm. And if the world tries to tell us that we can always have joy, and and if we suffer, then somehow, Mm -hmm. right, things we must be doing this wrong, then the world is giving us the wrong message. Well, I think as Americans, we are all about our comfort and our convenience. Not everything in life is comfortable, and not everything is convenient. And you know, you may go through suffering. But there can be joy in the suffering as well. And you experienced a whole lot more joy during the whole experience with her than you probably ever imagined that you could? Well, not during. (laughs) (laughs) After. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But isn't that a message to people as well about what they're going through right now versus what the rest of life Mm -hmm. can look like? 
Yeah. I, I think, you know, it's so easy to be short-sighted and you only see the problem in front of you and you, d you just don't even realize what could be on the other side because you're so swallowed up in all, you know, the problem. Thank you.